Rio for us was, you know, incredible, and I don't think it sunk in for me. I even had it on my honeymoon where I was pretty relaxed. I was kind of in a, you know, in a semi-dreaming state of, you kind of, I was dreaming of all sorts of things. I think I was dreaming I was a Formula One driver. You know, I went to space, but one of the things was, you know, I've got an Olympic bronze medal, but I did actually have to Google it just to double check that we did actually do it. You know, it's both of our first Olympic games, so to be able to go there and perform how we did, um, I think it's something we both can be very proud of. Uh, it's certainly something I don't think we'll ever forget either. Among the rush of medals Great Britain won in Rio, Chris Langridge and Marcus Ellis's men's doubles bronze was one of the most remarkable underdog stories. The English pair were back at the National Badminton Centre in Milton Keynes after a well-deserved break, and Badminton Unlimited caught up with the British duo to get the inside story on their incredible Olympic journey. We didn't set so much um, targets in where we were going to get in the tournament. We very much focused on um, our performance and what we were going to do to trouble other pairs. Because obviously going in, we weren't expected to get a medal. You know, there's certainly no denying that. We, you know, we were one of the outside pairs almost, you might have said. Throughout the season, there'd been times where we'd beaten, you know, a lot of top 10 pairs. So we knew on the day, if we played well, within reason, you know, there weren't many pairs we couldn't beat. We, we were surprised, obviously, to win the bronze. It, you know, it was, a, it was an upset, as Marcus said, it was, it was a, a shock. From Great Britain, Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge. Ranked 22nd in the world before Rio, the pairing were given little chance escaping their group, never mind making their way onto the podium. After all, they were drawn against third seeds Kim Ki-jung and Kim Sarang, London 2012 silver medalists Matthias Bo and Karsten Morgensen, and tricky Polish pair Adam Svalina and Fremyslaw Raka. Despite losing to the Danes in their opener, the Brits sensationally beat the Koreans and clinically overcame the Poles to earn their place in the knockout phase. I think for the both of us that was like a big sigh of relief. We knew that was almost like the hardest part was is getting out of the box because as soon as it gets into a straight knockout, the pressure is always going to be on everyone else because at that point everyone was higher ranked than us. And going into the quarter-final, we probably played some of the best badminton we've, you know, we've, we've played together. So um, I think it, we just kind of like ended up riding a wave for the rest of the week, and you know, just went from one performance to the next. After stunningly upsetting eighth-ranked Hiroyuki Endo and Kanichi Hayakawa of Japan in the quarters, Chris and Marcus could not back up their tremendous win in the last four. Losing to eventual champions Fu Haifeng and Tang Nan, they faced off with another elite Chinese pair in the bronze medal playoff. We both said the night before, you know, we're, we're not le like leaving here at fourth place. Like it's always like the worst, the worst place, you, worst place sometimes. So, we, you know, we, re we really wanted that medal when we got to that point, and we were, you know, we were willing to do anything for it. The, the hunger and desire we had at the Olympics, you know, hopefully anyway, it was clear to see that we really, really, you know, wanted to medal. And at the end of the day, kind of our desire and hunger kind of got us there, dragged us there almost. You know, we both just went for it and we said, like, we've got to go all in and throw everything we've got at this pair. And uh, I think we did that. And even though, yeah, it did go to three sets, I think in the third set we had complete control the whole way through. The British combination kept their cool against Chai Piao and Hong Wei, even when Chris's match-winning serve was initially judged out. Because when I hit the serve, I could feel it was in, and I even turned around to Marcus and said, I think that's in. And then Marcus let me know that I think about to I kind of suggested it was in as well. I think it's, it's easy to let your mind get carried away, and it's such a big match that you don't want to think, oh my God, you know, we could win this. Because before you know it, they could have a comeback, then you get more tense. You can almost think too much about the score than playing, and you can lose the tactics, and you know, your, your mind can go blank. The decision was overturned on review and Chris and Marcus wrote their names in Olympic history for British badminton. I think my bottle went flying and all sorts and I turned around and Marcus was on the floor and I, the funniest thing was we had two coaches and uh, Jakob and Julian and I think Jakob was like celebrating but Julian our other coach was like, on the floor like beating the floor. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened to him, he like <laughs> went crazy. It was an incredible feeling. I'm, I'm quite thankful that when I served, it wasn't called in straight away because I think I would have gone absolutely crazy and I probably have done something embarrassing. So I think it's quite good that it, you know, it was that overall which gave me a second to attempt to compose myself. 
Meddling was far more than just a personal triumph. It was also a victory for the sport in Britain. And the pair believe that with the interest created during the Olympics, they now have a unique opportunity to keep badminton in the public psyche. In the past, we've had great success in the mixed doubles. We, you know, we've had a silver medal and a bronze medal, but it was kind of 12 years ago that we they had that success. And men's doubles have had great pairs along the years, you know, a lot more successful pairs, you could say, than Marcus and myself, but it hasn't happened for them in the Olympics. And to just achieve it on the biggest stage is such a big thing that hopefully we can inspire kind of the, the next generation from Britain to say, well, hold on, those lads can do it, why can't I? And, you know, it gives the, the young ones that bit more confidence in training, who we're training with, to think, well, if we're training with these guys and we're, you know, they're not that much better than us, then, you know, in years we can strive to kind of achieve what they have. Armed with newfound confidence and heightened belief, the pair are keen to make an impact on the BWF circuit. And if Chris Langridge and Marcus Ellis can continue in the same vein as in Rio, the elite field in men's doubles just got another tough challenger. You know, we need to use the confidence that we've got from the Olympics, carry it forward. And, you know, I think people will fear us now, you know, and they will respect us. And it counts for a lot, you know, going into the Denmark and France and then we go away to Asia in November, you know, it, it, it does mean a lot. So, and I'm actually quite excited to get going again because, you know, who, who knows what could happen.